In this video, I will demonstrate in IBM's Maximo application suite how to create a web service. Then I will configure that web service, and then I will create and run a regression test for that service. So I am Andrew Mann, Director of Product Development at Total Resource Management. Uh, let's start at the Maximo application suite's landing page running at trmsas.com. This is the page users see once they log in to the suite, uh, also known as Moss. Here you can see the tile for Manage. Uh, Manage really is just a rebranding name for Maximo running in the Maximo application suite. So let's launch this and this will bring us to the User Start Center, uh, which you're probably familiar with. Now let's navigate using the panel on the left uh, to our web services library. Out of the box demo data, we have no configured web services. So let's go ahead and create one for an object structure. Uh, we're gonna select an out of the box object structure for asset here. Um, we have to navigate to it because we don't have a filter in this dialog, unfortunately. So we select it and just click create. And this will just create everything we need for this web service. And we're gonna go into this web service and you can see our operations below, the create, we update, delete, sync. Um, so now we need to deploy this to actually make it active. So let's go ahead and click on the deployed product web service container. And now we're ready to go. We can actually run stuff against it. So I'm t going to switch over to Rules Manager Studio IDE. Uh, this is an application that will vastly simplify my ability to configure uh, this, this web service and then create uh, and run a regression test for it. So first, let's go ahead um, and use this product. I should note that this uh, Rules Manager comes with Moss running on trmsas.com. So let's go ahead and reconnect to our uh, server here that I've connected to before. And this is an out of the box uh, installation. So there's really not gonna be any configurations already done for us. And then we're gonna go over to ramp up developer perspective. This perspective is for people who wanna create regression tests. So all we need to do to create one for SOAP is right click and it says SOAP test. Uh, it's pretty simple. This will give us a template for a type of SOAP test. So we're going to do a sync and it lists our, our web services currently configured on this server. So we're going to go ahead and create a sync SOAP test file and open it up and it pre-populates most of the stuff that we already need to, to set up. Um, and in the test script you can see the body XML, the, the message XML that we, we're going to put it, send in our post. Um, and this is just a template, so we can uh, edit this at will to, to change this and configure it the way we want our message to see for our test. So I'm gonna get rid of a lot of this fluff. Uh, let's go ahead and get rid of some of these attributes as well. And I'm gonna go ahead and put in an out of the box demo data uh, record, since that's what we're dealing with here. And I'm not actually gonna modify any other fields. This is a sync. So this will just just uh, post in, basically just updating the change date. Um, and so I'm also gonna uncomment, uncomment some of this other JavaScript, which is already in here as a template. And you can also modify this. This shows how you submit it and stuff like that. So now I'm gonna run the test. All I have to do is right click and say run test. And we get our output. And this is the boilerplate response for a sync web service request. So it successfully went through, but it doesn't give you a lot of information. I, I kind of want to know what fields are updated whenever somebody does a sync. So this is a configuration I'm going to actually create. And then I'm going to run this test again, modify it slightly and see what kind of results I get back. So let's go over back over to our rules manager developer perspective and cre create a new rule, a web service rule by using the web service rule wizard. Right clicking here, this brings us up all the configured web services we have in our server. So I'm going to select my asset object structure web service. And then this gives us, uh, the next page gives us all the rules we can possibly write for this uh, web service. At this point, I'm going to need two rules. So the first rule is I want to note every single time a field changes during this web service, whenever somebody syncs to it. So I want to go and find um, this this shows me all the record rules all the field rules I could write and all the just general um, maximum integration framework rules I could write so let's go ahead and find an on change because uh, that's gonna be an on change of our field so on change of a field I'm gonna select this type of event 
and then I'm going to navigate to my asset. So on change of a field and an asset, I'm going to select all the fields because I just want to say anytime a field changes, I need to know. And this has given us the editor for our on change field change. So now quickly, I'm going to type through this um, configuration. It's pretty simple. I just need to record uh, the name of the field. So first I need to uh, create a variable that I can pass between my events. And we're going to use the maximum object for that. And this is called maximum updated. And um, I'm going to basically just make this a uh, array. So uh, I'm going to create an array and I'm going to put in names, field names into this array. And so, as you can see, as I'm typing this, you, you get some completion uh, on the different methods and the different variables that I have access to. Um, this is all part of our Rules Manager IDE um, suite that helps you create your configurations um, that you need to make. So I'm just adding um, the name of the field that was modified to this array. And I'm going to put in a description here. And once I'm done with this, I need to create another rule. Now the next rule needs to actually modify the web service response. So again, open up the wizard. I'm going to navigate to um, our on response event. And I'm just going to click finish. And this will say on response. I'm going to fire this before it handles max max ML. I'm going to take whatever names of fields that were modified and make it part of my response. Uh, so let's go ahead and navigate in and going here again we're going to go in and check to see if we have any updated fields make sure the array was was created by a, a previous on change and I'm going to get my XML um, that I, I actually copy and pasted that previous response because I kind of want it to look the same as before. Um, I don't really want to change it too much. I'm just taking out some of the uh, schema data, stuff like that. I don't need all that information. Um, and then I'm going to use ECML, ECMA JavaScript to just create an attribute on this XML, on this main XML element. Um, and I'm going to call it updated. And then I'm just going to pass it the, the array, which will just turn it into a uh, comma separated value of field names. Now, Something I should note is, is the completion. You do get descriptions. I've been typing really fast. So here you go. When I just hover over each of the, the variables or members of these objects, you'll see on the right, it'll tell you what exactly each of these members does and what it's used for. So in this case, I want to modify my response. Um, and so my, my user response, there's an actual variable called user response in an integration framework. And so I'm going to take that and I'm going to say, you know what, take my XML that I saved up here and turn it into a string and send it back as part of my response. Now I'm going to go over here and I'm going to right click and run this test again. You'll notice it looks very similar, except now there is an updated attribute. Um, and that includes all the fields are changed, which I didn't really do anything. But it does sync, so it does modify the change date. Um, and so those are the fields that were actually modified during this. So now, you know what, let's, let's go ahead and test this to make sure this is modifying a field when we do a sync. So I'm going to go ahead and just do something silly, like modify the description. Um, and so I'm going to go over and navigate to this record um, in the front end. I'm going to the asset application, uh, find my record, and just copy my uh, description because I, I don't really want to uh, modify it too much, but I'm just going to make a note that it was modified by a web service. And then, and then I'm going to run this again and make sure that this description field is part of that updated attribute. So right click run and oh, I got an error, but it gives me a pretty good information about what I did. As you can see right here, um, it's telling me I forgot to, in my copy paste uh, haste, I forgot to modify the end tag. So I had to save it again, rerun it. And you can see now I've got description as part of my updated CSV. Great. All right, uh, let's go a little bit further with this configuration. And um, this is our regression test. We can run this as many times as we want. We can make this part of a chain, but let's go ahead and, and modify the, our original configuration. Say, so, you know what? I want to know in my response, I want to see what was actually submitted as part of the sync. Um, and so instead of putting this boilerplate response in there, I'm actually going to use the ER data, um, which if you're a MIF developer, you've probably are familiar with. It's your data that came into Maximo. And just 
put in the updated attribute as part of the root of what came into Maximo. So I can actually see that. So when I run this again, now you'll see that I actually get the exact thing that I submitted in my, my test, plus I'm also going to get my updated attribute at the top. I could go further and modify this test to do some assertions and failures based on the information that I received to verify that this is running through. But please see our other videos uh, as that exceeds what this tutorial is about.